Game Beard. Hi gamers, today we're going to continue our series of basic painting tutorials where we talk about stuff you need to know if you're learning um, to achieve a really high level, mid-level painting um, so that you can get your armies and your miniatures out on the table as opposed to being a super big professional painter um, that doesn't <laughs> finish as many miniatures because they're too busy making them absolutely gorgeous. But we're gonna, we can make our miniatures look pretty good. This looks pretty good in my opinion for the game. Uh, but today we're going to um, look at basing and my particular method of basing which is using textured paint from Liquitex because it gives me a good result and the most important thing about this texture paint is that it doesn't rub off. Traditional methods um, may rub off and there may be um, technical ways um, where people use uh, grass and stuff like that and they probably you know, soak it and do all this fancy stuff so it doesn't rub off. But I've found this just to be super convenient, fun, and you can paint it and it never, it never comes off. So I like it. It's uh, Liquitex Texture Paint. It's actually called Texture Gel, but whatever, Texture Paint. Anyways, let's look at a traditional um, basing method with some grass. So here you can see this, um, this is an old Space Marine, um, and he's got some grass in there. And then he's also got some rocks. So like you can get these rocks from Woodland Scenic. You could probably get this um, this grass. Like Gale Force Nine does stuff like this. Um, all kind of, uh, probably GW. Probably, you know, so I haven't I haven't been in the um, shopping for this grass stuff. But you can get this stuff anywhere. Privateer Press probably makes it. Uh, everybody makes this stuff, and it's pretty good. The problem is it rubs off, and after a while I got tired of it. Um, but it does have a nice look. So if you definitely go in for grass, what you would do is you would just, um, you would paint your, your base like a color, probably green. And then I would recommend green because especially when it starts rubbing off, you'll still see some green in there. And then you're going to paint some watered down Elmer's glue, right? So you'll water it down a little bit and then you'll just paint it in there. And then you'll, you'll like, you'll dip it. And you know, there's probably a million videos about that. So you can watch those. And then you finally glue on some, uh, rocks, right? Um, and it looks pretty good, but like I said, it rubs off, so I'm not a big fan of this, so we're not going to talk much about that, but it is, it is possible. What I like to do is I like to, let me find one here. What I like to do is I just like to use that textured paint. It doesn't rub off. I paint it. I paint the heck out of it too. Like this almost looks like too much paint on top of that, uh, texture gel or texture paint, but I, I like the result. Um, and my favorite texture paint mediums are this. So I got liquid gel. I'm sorry, Liquitex, but it's texture gel. So I use resin sand. Resin sand is the thicker stuff. Yeah, I'm almost out. So we have a uh, resin sand and this, these come in eight ounce, you know, jars. They might come smaller. I'd recommend the eight ounce, especially if you're painting armies and stuff like that. And then I also get the ceramic stucco. So the ceramic stucco is let me see if I can find it. Ooh, all these are mixed. Oh well, here you go. Here you go. Here you can see ceramic stucco. This is oh no no no. This is a combination. <laughs> I'll show you here. Whatever. Gosh. This is the ceramic stucco right here. It's very fine. It's very fine. This is like a sand. Even though so resin sand is the crunchier stuff. Like looks like rocks. So the ceramic stucco actually acts more like a sand, a sand or a gravel. And then the resin sand will create kind of a rocky effect. So like these little rocks and stuff like that. So that actually feels better for rocks, very tiny rocks that is. And then of course you can always glue rocks on to your base, which doesn't look like I have any examples of. Let's see, do I glue, I glue rocks on this. So for instance, this is, I, I combine them, right? So here's a base, a flying base for uh, something in 40K. And so what I did was, is I, I, and I'll show you, I start with ceramic stucco, then I um, let it dry, and then I do the resin sand, and I kind of gloop it on, and so it, it combines, it kind of gives me a, it gives me double. Like, so the, the, the ceramic stucco is like the fine sand, 
the resin sand is like kind of like a gravel and then I'll stick in some rocks these are bigger rocks but I just I stick them in there usually what I do is I kind of glob on uh, a little extra resin sand and I, I press them in and then sometimes they when you're painting you're dry brushing they'll 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 paint off like they'll you'll you'll brush them off but the ones that stay are pretty good and you can see that I, I, I dry brush it, you know, and then I'll use washes. This is, I did use some washes in here. Some of these examples I'll show you, I haven't washed them yet, and they look kind of plain. They're okay, but it's better to, so you can put some wash and you might dry brush it again. Um, but overall, pretty good effect. And of course, for a big flying base, um, I'm digging around my bits box and breaking off some old parts, um, scenery, or, uh, you know, whatever I got. And I'm, I'm gluing it in there. Sometimes I have a skull or something like that, and I'll glue it in there. And then usually I, I, you don't have to do this, but I, I paint the edge. So it looks, it just looks nice. But that's me. That's me. What do you want to do? I don't know. Okay. Oh, and then finally, I typically use um, these little tufts, right? And I actually paint my tuft. So like I dry brush a light color, I'll, I'll paint it. The top of the tuft. And I'll show you the difference. It, it, in my opinion, it looks better. Um, you'll paint it with your highlight color that you're using to paint your your gravel and your sand. Anyways, that's that. Okay, so where do we begin? Where do we begin? Well, I got these guys. Um, so I got this guy. So he is a, uh, he's from Dust. He's like, a, I think he's like a heavy laser grenadier, I think. And so what I would do is I would start with my ceramic stucco. And I do this before I prime the model. So like what I'll do is I'll, I'll get this all done and then I prime, I prime the gravel and the model at the same time. Now these are semi-primed um, from uh, Dust 1947, but I, uh, here you can see I'm just going to get it. Um, but I still, I, I end up priming them again because you have to like sand down some mold lines and stuff like that. Anyways, I get, now this is a, a, a trowel, what do they call these things? I think they're like a painting trowel, I don't know what they call them. But you can get these at Michael's, at uh, Hobby Lobby, or like an art store. I got a nice one, sometimes they're plastic. I just got a nice one because um, I knew I was going to be doing this like forever. I also have a thicker one. They have thicker ones. This one's for like to get in between legs. And then I have a bigger one here. I got it right here. I'll show you. This one's uh, for bigger stuff, like for big bases. What's this one? Here's one. This one's like in between. I like this one. I haven't used it yet. That's funny. I, I must have acquired it somewhere. Um, but the metal might last longer, but plastic will work okay, you know, if you're on a budget. Start with plastic, and then if you like it, get a metal one, right? Anyways, so I'm just going to rub it in there. I'm going to kind of scrape it around. Now, sometimes I don't even put a lot in there because, see, like, so for instance, this base, it's kind of a decorative base. It is, uh, it looks like a steel-plated base, and so sometimes I'll do something like this. I'll just kind of put a little bit on there just to kind of represent... Uh, that there is some some dirt and sand on top of that metal grate. So I'll do that, and I try to pres preserve uh, some of the metal the metal spinning it the wrong way the metal grate in there, right? Then usually after I spread that on, I might spread a little more on, but for today I won't. Then I'm I just rub the edge just to kind of clean it up. That way it's not uh, you know on there. If it's a full base, let's see, do I got one? I don't know. Like this guy, I go all the way to the edge because it's more of like a, uh, it's not a decorative base. It's just, you know, so I go right up to the edge. But like I said, for these dust ones, I sometimes I just keep it like that. Okay, so I do that first and I let this dry. But I have another one that's already dry. So here we go. So this is my, my ceramic stucco that is dry oh you know it's funny um and i think this is just ceramic stucco okay good so i let this dry and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my um resin sand and kind of add some of that so let's see here i'm going to put this away okay we got resin sand i'm running out of this stuff i gotta i gotta <laughs> i gotta dig to the bottom here Okay, so I get some. I don't get, well, actually, that was kind of a lot. I try not to get too much. But this is where you want to, let's see here. You don't want to spread it on everywhere. You just want to kind of, uh, I can spread that around later. You kind of want to just uh, haphazardly kind of put this around. Remember, this is more like the heavy 
uh, rock and grit. Now, if you wanted, you could just do the whole base in resin sand, and then you could add larger rocks. And I did that with my, my Space Marines. I don't have one on me, but I'll show you in a future video. So, like, if you want bigger grit, you go just resin sand, and maybe you only want to buy one of these. You're like, if you're only going to buy one of these, I would buy resin sand, because it's the more chunkier, um, it's going to give you a good look. Um, and then you can put little rocks on and you can just press them in. Usually what I do is I use my um, trowel and I, I, I kind of drop them on and then I press them in with my trowel. And then like I said, sometimes they'll brush off. So some will brush off, some won't. And just don't worry about it if they brush off. Just try to push them in. A lot of them, like half of them will brush off probably. Okay, so I kind of I haphazardly put some um, resin sand in there. I didn't cover up all the ceramic stucco. And then again, I take my finger and I just kind of rub the edge. Just it, it keeps it neat. Sometimes you might need to like you might need to wet your finger, um, uh, lick it, or just dip it in water. Um, but usually I don't have to. Okay. Then I'm gonna prime it and it's gonna look kind of like this. So this is my um, so this is the combination of of the ceramic stucco and the resin sand, and it it gives me a really nice effect. It looks really good. I like it. So you got some you got some nice variety. And so because of this. I haven't, for many years, <laughs> probably 15 years, I haven't bothered to look to see if there's any other good um, Liquitex uh, texture gel products. For all I know, it's been so long since I've been looking for these things that they may have a better or a more interesting um, uh, texture gel that I don't know about. All I know is that like the black lava stinks, don't get that one. I remember I tried them out a long time ago. I think they have a sand. I think it's just a regular sand. Um, that might be in between this one and this one. I don't know. Probably what I'll do is later I'll perhaps do another video where I try out all the other uh, texture gels to see if, how well they work. But these are my go-to. These are like, I've had such good success with these. I kind of use them for everything. It might make things look stale, but um, these are my favorite textures they work really well so i highly recommend uh, liquitex resin sand and ceramic stucco okay those go away we get a nice result now what about grass though um you could probably paint this stuff grass but here's what i would do let's see let's get another guy so here i painted it like a concrete right or not a concrete it's like a like a ruined city and so this is all like yeah, well, it's like concrete dust, and, and this is a really big mech, so this is like, you know, this is from Robotech, and uh, remember that Kickstarter, how, how wonderful that was, and how everyone, like, loved uh, Palladium? Oh, just kidding. Anyways, um, sorry, Palladium, <clears throat> but anyways, it says a nice, um, thin texture, and so this could be painted uh, green and dry brushed like a lighter green. Probably what I would do is if I was going to make grass... I would um, I would use a lot of ceramic stucco, which is more grainy, and then I would use a little bit of resin sand. It might look like I might have, I think I have a teeny bit of resin sand in there, barely just a little bit in there. And then what I would do is I'd use washes. So I'd paint it green, and then I would use like green washes, maybe a little bit of brown wash in there, and it would blend, and then I'd dry brush it. And you'd probably get a pretty good effect. I do that with my Battletech miniature. So here you can barely, you'll probably barely be able to see it. So in Battletech, these are battle armors for Battletech, by the way. Um, I forget which ones. Sorry. Sorry about I, I love Battletech. I just can't keep these guys straight. I want to say Longinus, but I, I don't know if they are. Anyways, you're going to go in there. And um, what I did was, is for Battletech, I used the ceramic, because these are bigger scale or, or smaller scale. So I want to use a smaller gravel or grass. So I use mostly ceramic stucco, which is thinner, and then a little bit of resin sand and that resin sand looks like rocks for this scale that is and then I, I painted that like light brown and but then I'll do I'll put some washes of green in there washes of green in there. now I I could have made it a little darker but this is like an olive drab right and it it feels like um, like a worn field so there's like a lot of dirt and then there's some grass in there so this is effective for uh, smaller miniatures like 15 millimeter probably look good this is like, what, much, you know, this is like 1 285th, I think. So I didn't do it on him. 
No. But usually I, I'll, I'll put some green wash in there and it kind of blends. And then another thing I like to do definitely is I like to dust. Oh, I like to use these um, these tufts, right? And so when I use them, I use these tufts. Let's see, let me grab them. You know, they make these in a lot of different methods. I believe these are from Army Painter. Painter? I forgot. I bought them from um, Miniature Market. You're welcome, Miniature Market. Be nice to me. Anyways, um, I hate to admit, I buy it. I, if you don't know about Miniature Market, okay, search, look them up, and they kind of have everything. And they're good for paint, too. Um, but they have painting supplies like this. I believe this is from Army Painter. These are little tufts, and they have different colors. If you're going to do a lot of grassy fields, like you could, uh, you could use this method, or just use grass, but you could you could do uh, washes of green in there, but then you'd probably want to get greener, greener um, tufts of grass. Anyways, when I use these, um, they're usually too big, so I break them apart. Here, I'll just get a big one. I'll just show you. Oh, I guess I got to show you. Oh, I want to paint it first though. I'll show you in a sec. But anyways, I'll I'll break it apart. Okay, let's paint it first though. Um, because they're too big, but that's okay, and also it'll save you money. There's also methods to like, I've seen some videos on how to make these things. <laughs> Those are from the pros, right? Like, don't you save money and you can like make these things. Yeah, this cost me like maybe five bucks. I don't know. You know, I don't use too many of these. If you use a ton of these, yeah, make them yourself. There's cool ways to make these and you can watch some videos. I think it's, um, is it Luke Tawan? I think he, he's, he's the man. You can look him up. But anyways, I just, this five bucks, I just buy these. And these last me a long time. I don't use a million of those things, those tufts. So, okay, so let's talk about painting. I use, um, I don't use pure white. I, I use this. This is what, Privateer Press? This is what, Menoth White Highlight? This is my favorite. I used to mix white with, to make a cream. And I'm like, what am I doing? Finally, I found this. I just use this. Now, that's, that might be a little too much. Usually what I do, and we'll talk about it in another video, I, I dry brush the whole model. Like, it's like an underpainting. So, like, I'll, I'll highlight it, and then I'll paint on top of that. So, while I'm dry brushing the whole model, I'll also paint the base. And usually I use this Menoth, what is it, Menoth Highlight. So I, it's like a cream. You could use white, too. Some things I use white. A lot of times, though, I use um, this cream. Now it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. I don't want to do too much... I tend to go overboard, I, you know, and I think that to a fault, right? So you could take it easy on this stuff. Let's see. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. I also like when they when there's like um, bevels in the base. I like to hi highlight the base too. That's just me. Like I like to. I, I want to see that that little edge. It's cool. I like it. Um, but whatever. It's up to you. What What do you want to do? I don't know. You choose. Okay. So that's pretty good. I could go further. Um, but I'm not. Let's talk about gluing on the tuft. Okay, here we go. So I got my tuft here. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty big. Um, and you can see on the back it's glued. So I, I tear these in half or more. Like I could probably get three out of here. I'm just going to get a small one. Let's see. Ooh, that's kind of a big one here. Goatee. Oh! Oh, <laughs> fail. I'm trying too hard there. Okay, next. Okay. Let's see. I could even tear this one in half. Um, I'm not for the sake of the video, but I would probably tear this in half. You know what? Fine, I'll tear it in half. I got two of them. I'm going to put these here for now. I actually use super glue for this. <clears throat> they're like, oh, you stick it on the base because they're sticky on the bottom of the base. Yeah, I don't think so. Like, uh, you got to glue it. Okay, so let's get my glue. I, I hate to admit I use Gorilla Glue. Um, Gorilla Glue is awesome. It seems like they've been, they've been getting like way more expensive lately. So I'm like, hey, what's up, Gorilla Glue? Like, they used to be the best. So I don't know what to tell you. Okay, is this ready to go? So I'm going to put it so we can see it. Gonna, oh, yep. And then I'm going to put a little over here. Okay, so that's, that's gone. Okay, then I'm going to stick it in. But watch what I'm going to do. Oh gosh, okay, I want to get the, <laughs> okay, here we go, so I'm going to stick it right there, okay, I'll stick this one over here, can you see what I'm doing, yeah, okay, stick this one over here, okay, but, that's not enough, 
you really, really want to well this is what i do so you could do, do whatever you like right you're the you're 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 the expert expert in my book but i'm just giving you ideas so what i use i use the bottom of a brush and i like i like press it down so what it does is it helps it really glue in there and then also you can kind of like mess it up so that's all over the place because right now it's just kind of going in one direction not so great so what I do is I try to get in the middle. Let's see, can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, barely. Okay, so I go in the middle, I press it down, and then I kind of, on purpose, kind of spread it out and kind of mess it up there, right? And then you can kind of scrumble it a little. And that, that gives you a nice result. Okay, going to this back one. So you can see this back one. It looks okay, but I, I wanna, I'm gonna kind of, if I can scrumble it this way. So I'm gonna try to go in the middle here and then press down. Press down, add a little pressure, and then I'm going to kind of move it around. Use the tip, it's, well, it's the back of that brush. That's that, And that gives me a nice look. Now, let's look at this stuff. Normally, you'd let this dry because what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust. I'm going to dust the top of those. Now, they look good. Um, they actually stand out from the base because they are uh, kind of a darker brown, right? So that's kind of nice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to dust it. It'll make them blend in more. And you might you might argue, well, then you can't see the tufts of grass or dead grass as much. Yeah, it's true. But then they also kind of blend in a little bit. So I, I like the result. So again, I leave it up to you. I'm just giving you suggestions. Oh, i got to dry my brush because I, uh, I put it in water. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm frantically drying it. Okay. Hopefully it won't be too wet. Let's find out. I'm gonna get a little bit more of my highlight. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we're gonna do here. Yeah. So we'll just compare this to the other one. I'll just do one. So let's see. Yeah. Okay, I like that. If you do too much though, it will totally blend in. But whatever. Okay, so so let's look at this one. Nice. And then here's the other one. Not much difference, um, but it, I think it adds. It adds a little. It helps. It helps it tie it in a little bit, and that looks pretty nice. Okay. Finally, um, what else would I do with this? I would um, perhaps do a wash. So let's see. In case you don't know about washes. Oh man, I hit my thing again. <laughs> Just a little bit of paint with a lot of water. Okay. More water, the better. <laughs> If it's if if you mix too much water and it's too light, then you know just don't use that much water next time, right? Wow, that's how we roll here. Okay, let's see how well this works. So what I'd usually do is I'll put a little. The problem is it looks here. Here's a good example. So here's another dust figure. It looks good, but it looks very um, uniform. If all the in fact maybe I should just do it on this model here. Yeah, get out, get out of here. Um, because there's more, there's more, there's more base you can see. But what I like to do is, let's see, I like to add a little bit of wash in there just to kind of mix it up, maybe just a little. And this is where you can introduce, and you, you might rub it, smear it. Um, it just varies that dirt a little. But then you, and so I might go darker. You might use like a, an olive drab, like a green, if you want to have a hint of green in there. Or if you want a lot of green, you might put a lot of green. But what this does is it covers up my, uh, let's see here, let me get a little more water. It's kind of spotted in there. See, that doesn't look so great. So I'm spraying around. But what I do is, is I dry brush it again. Should we try? Let's try. I would, if you, and, and what you do is, this is time consuming for one model. Usually you're working on an army. And so, if you have like 30 Space Marines, you're going to like do the texture paint. Then you're going to prime them. Then you're going to paint them. Then you're going to like, uh, and you do it all together. Then you'll dry brush the base. Then you could just wash all those bases. And so, it doesn't take as much time if you're doing them in huge batches. So, you might use a couple different colors. But what I usually do, so I would probably use maybe another color in here. Um, but what I'm going to do, let's see. Let's see if I can just dry brush this. It hasn't dried... So it may not, I'm not responsible if this doesn't totally work here. Let's try it. Let's try. Okay, here we go. So when you dry, when you dry brush it back on, it's a little wet. But it, it ties it back in again. So if I use washes, I'll dry brush it, wash it, 
a little bit here and there, not everywhere, here and there, and then I'll just dry brush it again. Usually I'm constantly dry brushing because that's just my, that's just what I like to do. So whatever you like to do, you might have a different method, but um, it could create some variety. That was kind of subtle. What happens is my brush is a little wet, so it totally just smeared over that. Um, but that can help make it look more interesting. Finally, oh yeah, let me talk about this. Um, I love this stuff. I use it for everything. <laughs> I even use it on old, um, so texture paint. I use my texture paint on old vehicles. Oh yeah, here you can see. So it's like an old Chaos Rhino. It's, it's not completely finished. Um, I'm not finished painting with it, but it's in the process. It's kind of sitting on my, in my garage. But here you can see I use, so this is ceramic stucco. Ceramic stucco is nice because it really is a fine, it's not too, you know, deep. And you can really kind of smear it on. So this looks like, like mud caked on, caked on the hole here from these tracks. And then you're, you know, you're just dry brushing and painting. So this is like a really, most of my stuff is this dusty desert kind of stuff. And so it looks really nice here. It looks really good. It's all caked on. It makes it look old and, you know, gross. And then sometimes, let's see, can we see any up here? Yeah, like I'll put a little right here. So it's just for old, for old machinery. Um, I cake it on sometimes. I usually don't do it for Space Marines, maybe not a lot, but definitely for like old crates, um, objective counters, um, chaos. I'll do you know old machinery that's ancient, maybe some Necron stuff. I'll do it on. But it, especially if you have a lot of smooth surfaces, I like to um, I like to apply this stuff, and it looks pretty good. So let's see, what else, what other examples do I have? Oh, here is a, um, this is like an old, uh, you know, uh, dreadnought base, right? And it had its own stuff, but I, I just added some of this um, texture paint on to kind of give it a nice look. So again, to make it look more, you know, like with some gravelly on. So again, I'm combining a little bit of ceramic stucco and then um, some resin sand as well, and then dry brush it, you know, and I definitely like the look, so that's a lot of fun. Let's see, have I discussed everything? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so I get a lot of use out of um, resin sand and ceramic stucco, Liquitex. Give it a try. If you can only buy one, get, um, get resin sand. Resin sand is your more chunky stuff. So like, this is resin sand. And then this is ceramic stucco right here. If you're doing a lot of space marines and you can only buy one, get resin sand. But but you want to put rocks in there. So like if you have tiny rocks, kind of like this. So you want to get tiny. So I would use resin sand with um, these rocks. These are just, you can buy these. They're like uh, Woodland Scenics, I think makes little bags of these. But get real fine, fine rocks. Um, and then press them in and then then it'll give it variety because this this alone doesn't have I mean it's okay it's okay but this alone doesn't have enough variety I highly recommend you just get ceramic stucco and resin sand and you mix them you start with ceramic stucco add a little bit of that it looks it'll look great that's um that's my go-to I have a lot of fun with that so here's my Cthulhu guy so again um, it looks nice and um, I get a lot of great results out of it. So I hope that was informative. If you have, um, definitely pick that stuff up. Give it a try on your, your models. Let me know in the comments. And um, if you have negative comments, then, oh, well, too bad for me, right? But I really don't care. <laughs> Remember, this is for new painters. If you're an expert, go to those expert channels. They know what they're talking about. And I go to them, too. I get a lot of tips from them. But again, as I, I can't stress enough, um, you get, you get into a rut after you've been doing this for like 20 years and you find what works and you get your models painted and they look pretty, they look good for the table. You're going to get them out there on the table and um, you're going to have a lot of fun. So here at Game Beard, we're definitely focused on um, playing games, playing really fun visual games as opposed to just painting masterpieces. So keep watching our videos. Um, we'll have more in this basic paint series. We're going to talk about uh, underpainting and more stuff, washes and dry brushing in future videos. So I'll, I'll see you then. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.